Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Pro Over Analyzed. I'm Stylosa, and today we're going to take a look at London Spitfire versus LA Gladiators from the Overwatch League preseason. But this is a very special game. This is a game where we're going to be focusing on Rascal. We're going to be focusing on the use of May. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, the use of May in a professional environment. This is awesome. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Josh. Josh, take it away, my man. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Pro Overanalyzed. It's me, Josh. I know, I'm not Stai. Ha, it was me, Josh, all along. Surprise. I bet you weren't. But today we're going to be looking in particular at some London Spitfire gameplay footage from the Overwatch League. Isn't it good to have pro level games? I certainly think so. I'm super hyped to see how the Overwatch League develops. Hopefully you guys have been enjoy enjoying the preseason as much as I have. Words, they're important uh, to get out properly. There we go. But I have been absolutely loving watching it. Some up and down performances, some surprises, some not so surprises. But this game in particular really caught my eye. This is the LA Gladiators up against London Spitfire. This is on Horizon Lunar Colony. And we're going to see something a little bit cheeky. We've got to have a cheeky rascal, which, which makes me very, very happy. If you aren't familiar with these players, don't worry. You will be soon. Today, we're going to be focusing primarily on Rascal and how he's leaving LA Gladiators out in the cold. So, if you aren't familiar with Rascal, who the hell is Rascal? Well, he is uh, one of the key players, I believe he was captain, in fact, for Kongdu Panthera, also known as Cloud9 Kongdu, when they picked those guys up. He's known for his incredible hero pool, like him and Birdring, between them basically cover all of the DPS options available to you, including, as you can see on your screen right there, Mei. And we're going to see some brilliant Mei play coming out here. Now, you might think that, well, Mei, first point, this, this is a very, very open point, right? This is very, very sort of, Horizon is known for having these wide open spaces. We've been seeing a lot of Widowmaker on this map, for example. We've definitely seen a lot of Orisa as well, but he's got these big open spaces that sort of go into their ner very narrow chokes, but May here? Surely not. Surely how's this going to work out? Well, let me explain it to you. Now, you see Gladiators rolling out here and just before they do, let's just take a quick look at how the Gladiator is actually going to be managing this. Let's take a quick look at the team comps. You can already see that they're starting to pull to the left. You can see the London Spitfire is playing in a big old clump. That's right. It's, it's the Ariza comp. You should be used to this by now. If Ariza is on the map, then you can kind of expect most of the team to be playing from a single unified position. And that's all they're going to do. They're just going to stay on this high ground and they're going to just try and leverage all the DPS advantage they can. They have Bird Ring on the Soldier 76, very strong from high ground. They have Fury on the Roadhog as well, just to help out that little bit of extra killing power and because LA Gladiators don't have any kind of strong anti-hook they're going to have to rely on Winston's barrier not really that reliable especially if you're trying to sort of bully your way past these corners this can be extremely dangerous the other big thing is that of course you can notice the LA Gladiators opting not to run with a Mercy Mercy still extremely in the meta this leaves them extraordinarily vulnerable to picks at the moment of course if someone does go down in this big open field then they're probably going to be down permanently but let's roll the clip and just see how it goes you can see they try and use that bulb but the Orisa just slows them down pulls them in, she sucks them in, and then Fury just lands that easy hook. Shaz goes down, and Gladiators still commit to this. Rascal, meanwhile, picks up a kill on Shawfort on the back line, but at this point, this push is basically done. Like, Shawfort being down is a huge DPS loss. Shaz being down is a big DPS and healing and debuff loss. Rascal, unfortunately, does go down to a rain of grenades after blowing up Hydration above him. Feels pretty bad, man, about that one. But it's not too big of a deal, because Nuss is right there and can just pick him up once more. And this is what you're going to see time and time again out of London Spitfire, right? This is what I want you guys to be watching for. London Spitfire are playing with the May intelligently. They're using the May and Orisa here to slow down the enemy team and just basically make them play at the pace that they want. And you're going to see this consistent mistake coming out of LA Gladiators, at least what I consider to be a consistent mistake, is that they're really going to get tunnel vision onto this May. They know that Rascal's sort of been splitting off, he's doing stuff on his own, but he's playing very, very intelligently using the May. He's using that ice block to basically bait the Tracer and Genji in. And then while they're doing that, meanwhile, Bird Ring is having free time, just shooting away Soldier 76, Fury's looking for hooks. Uh, even Fish is getting out the damage that Arisa can do on tanks and so forth where they can just use all this damage advantage and so Rascal, he doesn't even have to really do anything, he's just sponging attention and you can see that he's just going to be constantly making himself a complete nuisance. Now this is of course offset by the fact that he is an incredibly good uh, May player his right clicks are pretty much uniformly on point but you can see he's just got to start hunting down targets and the weird thing to me, the weird thing to me is that Shulfur is engaging him, he's engaging the May. Hydration's even coming in to help out and during all this time Fury's managed to demake Bisu everything's going wrong on the push on the front line because the DPS are killing a May? 
Really? Like, she's just got an ice block, and even if she goes down, they can probably protect Nurse long enough to bring the May back, and that's gonna cause all kinds of problems. If this dive doesn't find more vulnerable targets, and, like, to me, this is the cornerstone of dive, like, what just happened there? Sure Form managed to get a bomb on Nurse, and now this is a huge opportunity for LA Gladiators, because if you're running a dive, you want to find the vulnerable targets, right? That's how you sort of run the dive playstyle. You're looking for the most vulnerable, easy-to-kill target, jumping on that, putting a ton of pressure on them instantaneously, and then taking them down. Once Sure Form managed to land that bomb, London Spitfire realized, okay, this fight's a little bit on the rocks. They decide not to over-engage on it and just sort of let the first point go because they know that May is extremely powerful on second point. And so as we do move forward to second point, we've got to pause it just before they get through the doorway. May enjoyed a very brief heyday, like a while back. A while back, uh, May was sort of all over the place. And when I say a while back, I mean months and months and months. It might have even been during the beta. But we saw May popping up every so often, uh, especially on maps like 2CP and on Hannah Mora in particular, where you can use the wall, split teams up, and get a couple of easy kills. We're going to see May sort of doing that over and over and over again. That's purely because of this doorway here. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen, because the thing with this doorway is it doesn't have the same vulnerabilities as something like the Hannah Mora door. The Hannah Mora door is like this doorway, but... It's vertically open, which means that stuff like Winston here, Genji, Diva can all go up and over it. But this doorway, no, that can't happen. That cannot happen at all. And so what you're going to see happen over and over and over again as I hit roll on the footage, there we go, is you're just going to see the May split them off and then the dive come in and either A, Birdring will get into the back and kill people in the back line, or B, people on the front line will just get dived on and killed. So the wall's just going to slow them down, the dive's going to come in from London Spitfire, and they're just going to buy their time. Now this first hold doesn't go too well, like it's looking a little bit dicey. Um, Gladiators commits very, very hard. They use the sound barrier to sort of go through. The wall isn't exactly on point either. The dive starts going a little bit badly, but we also have the second hidden power of May, which is going to be slowing down the enemy team with uh, the Blizzard. And you can see that it was just easy for them to sort of stop up the DPS and here's the critical thing stop up that soldier 76 on the high ground because if you want to win on this map if you want to sort of take control on um Horizon Lunar Colony, what you want to do is get a hit scan on that high ground uncontested. Once that happens, it's almost unrecoverable. You see poor B Bishu there getting stalled out. If you aren't familiar with that sort of tactic, it's where the D.Va gets demacked and basically the enemy team want that to sort of be true forever, right? You don't want to kill the D.Va because that gives her a free mech, no. Leave her being small D.Va and then just pick her off in your own time. Murdering with a beautiful bomb, just keeping this momentum going. You're going to see Spitfire do this every single time. Every single time Gladiators tries to get something done, either May's going to block them off or Birdring's going to be around the back. And this is a lot of pressure on Birdring. And, like, this is where I have to urge you guys, you know, be careful trying this sort of stuff on ladder, right? Be very, very careful, because this is relying very heavily on Birdring's ability to get kills reliably, Rascal's ability to keep his cool, so to speak, on the May, and wall things off reliably, and then the dive's ability to not overcommit, to time it perfectly. And again, like, you're going to see during all this process, hey, the now comes in, Birdring comes in from the back, while they've been slowed down by this May wall, and now finally they're able to engage, they have to pull out so many ultimates to do so, but they're just being so slowed down, so stodged up, Shorefoot sure isn't even on the high ground where he needs to be, so he's just easy pickings here for a Winston who can just bounce them all over the place, he's got to hold on to this tactical visor because he knows that he has nano, blade, uh, nano visor available to him, but he's just been slowed down, stalled up, they can't get the positions that they want, they're being zoned away constantly by the use of this May, by the use of Fury as well, who's just sort of coming in from the side, pushing people around, being a nuisance on the Diva Fisher dropping down up top. Like they're using this high ground position as well so effectively to just drop down on people and then Fisher, for example, will always have his jump to be able to get out when he needs to. But otherwise, he can just drop on people's heads. And trust me, you don't want a Winston landing on you. And again, they start pushing. Now, here's one of the cool things as well about uh, Blizzard. It doesn't care about nano boosts. It really doesn't care about nano boosts. It's a beauty of a wall and the dive on it is absolutely impeccable. It's looking a little bit rough at first, but then the Blizzard just comes in to even shore them up and just stall them out even further. Now, for Gladiators, there's sort of a silver lining. They still have an opportunity here. Um, and Shaz gets a beautiful kill onto Birdring. So now is their time to go. But unfortunately for them, it's sort of taken them so long that, well, Nurse still has Valkyrie available. And sure, they managed to kill uh, Hagopi, and I'm sure I'm going to say that name wrong. I'm sure I pronounced it wrong. But he has Transcendence available to him as well if they need it. So Fish has managed to drop, sort of drop a bubble uh, in the choke. Fish has managed to slow down the DPS coming out. Nurse manages to uh, wait for both deaths to happen. Rez is two people, picks them back up. And then even if they needed it, if they needed the safety, they still have the Zenyatta Transcendence. And that's all because Rascal slowed down the push, everything's sort of been slowed down, Gladiators cannot play at the pace they want, and they're struggling for it, they're really struggling for it. Now, you can see Hydration, he's going to be looking for occasional cheeky picks here on to the Roadhog, and this to me is one of the most 
crucial missed opportunities. I don't like this hook. I hate this hook. I hate this hook so much. You have no idea how bad this is. This like makes me uh, uh, no, don't do this. You had the perfect opportunity to push in here. This was your clean push where you know that May is out of action. You don't have to worry about it. By hooking her, what you've done is given an opportunity for her to get woken up. Maybe get a wall up. Oh look, half your DPS is split off now and now everyone's just vulnerable to Bird Ring who's just going to build up a pulse bomb, find someone to stick it on and maybe get a couple of kills if he even needs it he doesn't fury just puts a bomb in on the front regardless shuffle ends up going down after the wall drops and it all starts going wrong right it slowed them down it's sort of the tar pit of this really narrow choke it's like they're playing into this super narrow choke over and over and over again they finally start getting an engage but then there's just a support ultimate waiting for them like they london spitfire don't need these support ultimates they can just wait till people engage into the choke slow them down stall them up use the blizzard and sure rascals asleep but who comes along oh look it's the combine harvest of fury who's just rocketed through two people people like it's insane ladies and gents it's so clever it's so cunning in how they're doing this and how la gladiators are just kind of falling for it every single time they will make a couple of changes literally right now they're doing it you can see big goose changing off the anna and going onto the lucio for a little bit more high speed impact and sure for going on to the reaper now to me the big mistake is literally what you just saw right here you can see that london spitfire tried to push them all the way back to spawn they know there's one minute left on the clock they can sort of play for as much time as they can and ensure there's one more fight but crucially you can see down there just just peeking at just pause it a touch too late but you can still see it like rascal is down here now, where do they need Rascal to be? They need him to be up here with a wall to block this off. If they can block this off, then it's super easy for the tanks to dive down here, Birdring to come in here, and you basically split the team into two little areas, like two little segments that you can fight, right? It's it's amazing. It's great. It's what you want. Unfortunately, Rascal is going to use the wall to get back up. This is giving Gladiators an, an opportunity, and they are going to take it. They're going to speed boost in, and this is a brute force team. Like, this is Roadhog, this is Reaper. These are high damage heroes at close range, and suddenly, slowing down the fight doesn't seem to have the same advantage it used to, right? Like, uh, Fury uses the bomb there just to slow down the engagement, but Hydration's managed to get in anyway. Landed a kill. Sure Force now getting stuck into the fight. Landed a kill. These are tough heroes. They are stodgy heroes. They want to get up close and personal. They want to have a big brawl on the fight, and it's all going horribly wrong. And even though Nurse has activated Valkyrie, Valkyrie cannot outheal Hydration and Shorefall on the Reaper and on the Roadhog. So it's a too little, sort of too late. But May may also has one more key advantage on 2CP, which is, well, you see that the point is, you know, of a certain size, well, Blizzard basically encompasses almost all of that, and what it's done is it's just, he's just dropped the Blizzard in the middle of the point, cleared it for a little while, bought time for his team now to reinforce, to come out, people using ultimates, uh, Hagopun, Hagopun, I'm sure I'm saying that name wrong, manages to get out, get the Transcendence out, support everyone, keep everyone alive, and now the reinforcements are here long enough for London Spitfire to just clean up. May, with the sort of, the superpower advantage at the end there, where if they even get onto the point, if May can come back, she's great for stalling, and she's great for the ability to have that sort of blizzard to just clear it. It says the LA one, but it's lying. Ignore it. Don't worry about it as we move on to part number two. So that's the May, right? Like, that's that's May for you, but this is Rascal, and this is why Rascal, uh, like, I say Rascal is because that's how the Korean uh, commentators pronounce it, but let's just say Rascal. Like, Rascal is going to show you why he is such a Rascal, because his Sombra is one of the most definitive Sombras in the game, and we're going to get a special treat for you, we're going to get to see it here on Horizon. We're going to get to see it played in a really cunning fashion, like, this is, this is what, like, I know that people say, you know, oh, it's Koreans, it feels bad, it's not the one, you know, it doesn't feel as British as it could be, but Rascal is going to be the cheekiest little rascal that you could possibly hope for in this coming game. Now, we know we're going into Horizon Lunar Colony, right? We know that it's Horizon. On Horizon, you generally see these very clumped, stodgy teams, and you can run Sombra offensively. We actually used to see defensive Sombras used just purely to counteract the offensive Sombra. So it's basically like denying them health packs. Because there's some large health packs to come out, it's really, really powerful. But crucially, I want to focus on this. I want to focus on this, and I'm going to just go on a little bit of a rant, a little bit of a tangent. This is Doomfist. You might not have seen him. He doesn't appear in Ranked Often, and when he does, he's usually heralded by a You Lose signal. Um, it's it's not very good. I, I'm not a big fan of this choice. Hydration apparently like plays an absolute ton of Doomfist on the ladder. I think the commentators mentioned at some point that he has an account where he just plays Doomfist. I'm sure he's great at it, but Doomfist, across all brackets, statistically, has a lower win rate. He is not good, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please be very, very careful when picking Doomfist. He has got sub-50% win rates on all brackets. He's extremely hard to use. This is a very open map. He's very high risk, high reward. Hydration is hoping for some quick kills, but London 
and Spitfire are going to completely sidestep the issue. They're going to do something very, very cunning and very, very cheeky, and I, for one, quite love it. All right, so the gates are about to open. You can see that Los Angeles Gladiator is going to be defending from the high ground. They want to drop hydration onto someone, get a couple of kills. They have no mercy as well, which I think is a critical mistake at the highest level. I think at the pro level, you really want that mercy. You really want the power that the mercy is going to bring you. But you can see Rascal coming out. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's invisible. What does he care? He's just going to go and take control of this. And what Rascal wants to do is he wants to bait people into fighting him. He wants to sort of get a fight or two, I'm sorry, against one or two people. And him and Birdring are just going to go into the point and what they're hoping to do is maybe pull one or two people down. What ends up happening? No one gets pulled down. Hydration gets a kill on Hagopium, but, you know, keep an eye on that thing in the center. Just keep an eye on it. it. It's kind of important. And they get two ticks. Two ticks until LA Gladiators realize that something is afoot. And this is now really scary for LA Gladiators. Like, you can lose a third super quickly. So sure, they had a good defense. Like, I'm just going to pause it very quickly. Sure that they got a little bit of an ultimate advantage here. You can see that these guys are pretty much all, on average, of about 50% ultimate charge. So that's really nice for them. No 100%, it's all relatively evenly spread. Meanwhile, London Spitfire, like Hagopune, managed to get very little. Even Rascal gets very little. Um, everyone's sort of sub 50%. So LA Gladiators may be a little bit ahead in terms of ultimate charge. But Jesus, look at this. This is shameful. And what this means is now they can't hold as they used to be. They're holding sort of all the way up here and are holding over here. But mostly, like, they had most of the people at the front. No, they've got to constantly have people back here. Really, it's usually the job of the diva to sort of peel away and do stuff like that, to sort of come back and sort of stall up the point. But even then, they would have had such a hard time dealing with Rascal and with Birdring. So it's so weird to see this. And I'm sure this confused London Spitfire when they saw it, because it's just like, where are they? We sort of want to bait them into a trap. We want to bait someone in. Come fight the Sombra. Or come fight the Tracer on the point. And then we'll just double team you. But that doesn't happen. Holy hell, ladies and gentlemen, it just makes me furious to see that LA Gladiators made such a mistake, and now they have this constant threat. Sombra just walks onto the point, and I think Birdring might even join him in a second or two, and almost caps it. Like, they have to peel back, and they have to peel back with so many people to do it as well. And during this time, then they can start picking off the people in the front. Gladiators get split apart, they get pulled apart, they have to send Anna and Soldier, the long-range heroes, to go and deal with the point. Meanwhile, Doomfist just gets picked off on the front line, people trying to retreat, taking damage into the backs. They can't afford to do that kind of stuff, ladies and gentlemen, and now it's starting to go horribly hard wrong. They're having to commit defensive ultimates on a fight that's already kind of losing. Shawfall sure goes for the tactical advisor, but Fury gets a beauty of a bomb. Don't worry, we'll get to see it in a replay as he manages to sort of find it. But the, fight, the fight's already tilted so heavily in their favor. Nurse activates Valkyrie as well, and that is the nail in the coffin, ladies and gentlemen, as it so often is. That ability to just bring people back into the fight is so, so powerful. That mercy res is huge, and they manage to take the point in really convincing fashion. Now, here's the outstanding part. Rascal did use EMP towards the end of the fight, but honestly, it was very, very low impact. You're going to see Rascal swap off it. This is the, the bomb before. It is really nicely placed. That ability to just sort of slow it down a little bit and launch it up and so it lands right in front of that hydroponic tank. Well, that's very, very nice because it means that it picked up a double kill, shut down the tactical visor and really shut down the offensive. Rascal is going to change off the summer now going for that McCree. Remember what I was saying earlier about trying to get that hit scan onto the high ground? That's what they want to do. They're sending Birdring in first as well while Rascal is just cleaning up on the front line. Birdring going to go cause some chaos, going to go cause some disorder, pull people away from the high ground and now Rascal is just set up completely free on the high ground. Like People are going to come up to meet him but they've got to stay on the point. They've got to contest the point. They can't do it again. I mean, if anyone knows about leaving the point, it's going to be London Spitfire of C9 Heritage and they know all about losing points, so they know about controlling points, and they're doing it just now. They're forcing people down to the point, so sure, four can go up and try and deal with the McCree, but during that time, Rascal can just take it slow, take it steady. He doesn't even have to necessarily win that fight super quickly, as long as they have control of the point. They're cleaning up the point, and then they've got to go and deal with that. Now, Rascal could just zone people out. Dead eye, no problem. Easy win as you like. Rascal, incredible player, enormous hero pool. Some really interesting niche picks coming out of him, and definitely watch how he plays these heroes. When he plays them, like think about how he's using them, think about how he's using the Mei, how he's using the Sombra. If these heroes ever sort of cycle back into meta, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If you ever want to consider picking these heroes up, this guy is the sort of guy you want to be looking for. This is the sort of guy you want to be watching. All right, guys, thank you for watching it to the end with me on this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this series as much as I did, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the London Spitfires as much as I did. I certainly love seeing them play and love seeing, well, they had some real good successes and some, some iffy matches, shall we say. I'm, I'm going to be critical in places. Don't mind me. But it's been my absolute pleasure to bring this to you guys. A little bit of a glance at May, a little bit of a glance at Sombra, and a little bit of a glance at the hero pool of Rascal, one of the strongest players in my mind in the Overwatch League. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot out of him. The DPS combo of Rascal and Birdring going to be having a huge impact in the future, I imagine. I'm looking forward to seeing a ton out of those guys in the future. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, guys. I have been Josh, just one voice amongst many, and I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.